a friend of mine from pre-college, who was a cellist, made me a mix CD, you know, as you did back yes, in the day. Yes, yes. And the mix in CD day, was all... In my day, it was a cassette. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. And this... Yes, yes. <laughs> Some of my favorite musicians are people who are difficult to describe in just a word or two. And these two folks both fit that bill. Lucia Micarelli is a violinist, but also a singer and also a performer and also an actor and so much more. Lucia, it's great to be with you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. And Leo Amoedo, guitarist of wide ranging skills <laughs> and wide ranging experience. Thank you. Leo, it's good to have you here too. Thank you. So the two of you have such interesting, different backgrounds. Leo, you were born in Montevideo. Uruguay, yes, Uruguay. that's right, yeah. And started playing guitar. What kind of music were you playing when you started out? Honestly, I don't remember because I was, apparently I was like four or five just, when I started just picking out grabbing the guitar. Or? I think my, yeah, my brother taught me the first chords and uh, I was actually doing rhythm first. That's, that's actually how I learned. I was standing next to him so he would play the chords and I would just play the rhythm with, with my right hand. Ah. Yeah, yeah, that's how so I... the two of you playing one guitar. He was, yeah, I'd be like playing like this and I would stand next to him. <laughs> that, 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 that's probably how I started. That's you know. fantastic. But how I get into chords, I don't remember really. <laughs> and your career has taken you from Latin America to the Netherlands to Brazil right. and beyond. And here now, yes. And here now. Mm -hmm. And your career started off with violin pure classical at, at first right mm -hmm. yeah I, so i started in queens my mom took me to suzuki like this is the local suzuki school when i was three she really wanted me to play piano um and they said that my hands were too small to start piano i should come back in a year and she was like what can she start today so yeah so i started <laughs> violin and then yeah we did we moved to hawaii my family moved to Hawaii when I was five, but uh, I was already pretty serious and continued my studies. And then we ended up moving back to New York so that I could go to Juilliard. Juilliard pre-college pre yeah. and then Manhattan School of Music with Pinkus mm -hmm. Zuckerman. Mm -hmm. And something really interesting happened in your musical life around then. You're studying with Pinkus Zuckerman, mm -hmm. straight up classical music mm -hmm. with one of the great violinists in the world. Mm -hmm. But you started going to clubs in mm -hmm. New York and playing other stuff. Yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, I, I, so I never listened to anything except classical music until I was 17. It was actually right before I went to go study with Zuckerman, like months before. Um, a friend of mine from pre-college, who was a cellist, made me a mix CD you know, as you did back yes, in the day. Yes. And the mix CD day, was all In my day it was a cassette. <laughs> yeah. Um yes. and this yes, <laughs> yes. Um and the CD was all classic rock and jazz. So that was the first time I heard Miles and Coltrane and Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard any of this stuff before and I was just like like so that was really the introduction, was just listening to that over and over again. And then, then, then started listening to those bands and those artists and just was kind of like mystified. And at that point, you know, I felt like I've been playing violin for, for so long and I've had this like very serious musical training. And I felt like I should be able to understand, <laughs> you know, whatever music, like I understand yeah. music, but I, I just felt it was... I don't know, it was like another world. And so it started with that. And then when I went, just as an idea, and then when I when I was studying with Zuckerman at Manhattan School, then I'm, you know, living in in the city <clears throat> and on my own and have the freedom to. I just was kind of interested in, in hearing whatever I could hear. And I, I saw somebody, I met um, a cellist named Dave Agar, who I saw him, I, I was at a reading, party with him and we like read a Shostakovich quartet and then everybody took a break and he went off in the corner and just started improvising and I'd never seen anybody do that before so I just like went up to him and I was like what are you doing and can you teach me how to do that and so just through that started 
being interested in improvising, listening to other kinds of music, and then through him and just being in the city, eventually started sort of sitting in with bands and other other genres of music just to to learn. Um, and so that was that was how it all started. It was just I was just very curious, and then curiosity. <laughs> that's the key. That curiosity. There are a lot of classical musicians who are interested in other kinds of music as listeners, but say things like, oh, I would never dare to improvise a, a solo over a B-flat 12-bar blues or something. There's, there's a mental leap that has to happen mm -hmm. to get off the page mm -hmm. for a classical musician. Yeah. That Unlike with this guy where that's just how he understands music. I mean, we have conversations about improvising all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. Yes, where he's like, come on, Lucia, just improvise. And I'm like, ah, it's so scary. Yeah. All right, we could, I, <clears throat> I'm fascinated by both of your backgrounds and mm -hmm. we could spend a lot of time on that. I, Cause I, that multi-genre approach, I, I love and admire in musicians. But I'm curious how the two of you started playing together as a duo we haven't even mentioned that you're singing now, too. So mm -hmm. this duo of guitar and violin, guitar and voice, how did this start to happen? I think it started actually, we got together a few times in my house, and then we started playing some of our favorite songs, some Brazilian stuff. And, and then we decided to film that and put it on YouTube, just for fun. And uh, using one mic, like, uh, so we did one video and then we did another video that like every week we got together just, you know, to, just to play. And, and then we find out, slowly we started to find out that we actually, well, first of all, we love doing that. And also the reaction of the people were really positive. And just to, to some of the basics, it's guitar, acoustic mm -hmm. guitar, and you're both singing and playing violin. Mm -hmm. And the music that you're playing is drawn from quite a variety of sources, mm -hmm. such as I mean, Brazil, right? A lot of Brazilian stuff. Yeah, I mean, stuff. it's really just like our different. I mean, different I think because like one of the things about that's that was interesting for us and why we decided to start like getting together for fun to play for fun was like I said, we yeah. we really enjoyed playing together in the other contexts that we had played together, and we seemed to have a real like we could we could we could come to something musically without talking about it like a very similar sense of what we liked or didn't like but right. at the same time like completely opposite backgrounds and don't know didn't know necessarily much about the kinds you know like i didn't know anything about brazilian music he didn't know that much about classical music or like whatever different <laughs> <laughs> and so it was interesting to kind of feel like, oh, we, we really communicate well, yeah. but we also don't, it was, we're like a mystery to the other. Mm. And yeah. to kind of come together, I mean, even in the beginning with those songs, a lot of it was us coming together and being like, okay, like here's a bunch of songs that I like, right. you know, and me playing, like sure. I would play you a bunch of songs that yeah. I like and be like, I want to, let's do, let's do a version of one of these. And you'd be like, I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, okay. That one. You know, and we, it would be like, I bring him like a Tom Waits song mm. and he's just like, oh, no, 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 I don't like Tom Waits. <laughs> no, but but then yeah. we find something and then we make it yeah. into something completely right. else. Yeah, exactly. And, and just having this, these different, this, the different backgrounds is yeah, really that, interesting. That was actually, I think, when you mentioned that, that some of the this, this songs, I thought, well, not that I didn't like it, but I couldn't find a space for me to do something different. Mm in there because that's what I like to do yeah like, learn the song and then forget it mm. and then just almost recompose it in a right. way harmonically or rhythmically or, yes yeah. and then it's more for me it's more interesting than just playing exactly what is which is a completely different discipline for classical music <laughs> exactly but, I love you know. that coming from these different backgrounds the two of you are finding this common musical ground and what about the audiences when you play for an audience at a festival where, say, maybe the audience is mostly used to classical music, they're mostly intimate venues, you can see their faces. Are the looks on the faces baffled and confused, or are they interested and curious and open? How do classical audiences react? You know, at the end, I think music is music, and if you touch people with music, it doesn't matter really yeah. what kind of music it is, right? Yeah. I think. I mean, 
I don't know. That, I don't know people. how much you've played for classical audiences, like specifically classical Probably audiences before. Yeah. And then like, I have experience playing for classical audiences, but I also have a lot of experience playing for non-classical audiences. Right. And I really just same. I same goes for the music in and of itself. Like there's the audiences and the music and the genres and the labels and the blah blah blah. Like I just really don't think that any of it matters as much as some people still think it does like I really think that the way that people consume music these days and listen to music like I remember when I you know I'm old enough to be like I remember back in the day but I remember like when I first started touring this was before streaming yeah. you know I would get on an airplane and then you and you have your instrument and then the person's like oh what's that is that a saxophone and you're like oh it's a violin and then they're like oh and then, and then you end up having to talk about music and at th in those days people really would be like I listen to opera right 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 like that's all I listen to you know or I love whatever country music and that's what I listen to and these days every single person even like 10 year olds are like oh I listen to everything I listen to classical music I listen to EDM I listen to jazz I listen to because it's all and, and we're consuming stuff that way I just don't think you know so I don't know so much that and the, the classical audiences yes they, they probably lean into it but music yeah. is music and everybody is, is a, it's a melting pot for everyone I and think we also don't days. play really classical music but we way. do we, we do, do and we don't. But, but, uh, <laughs> you yeah, know, that's the thing. In it's a like, freely way, kind of like, you know, I'm not a, I don't have a classical background anyway. And so, although I love classical music, I, I don't think I would be able to play a piece or something like perfectly the way it should be. You know, I'm going to just, I'm going to change it probably. And, and you so, do what you do, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is like playing for a classical audience, like really classical music is probably an experience different than what I have, mm -hmm. you know? Well, that's, that's what I love about this festival and this place mm -hmm. and what you're bringing to it is really not, as you said, not being concerned about the labels, mm -hmm. the genres, right. as you said, blah, blah, blah. Like, who cares? <laughs> music is music. So I love what this festival is doing and I love that they've brought you to be a part of it. And I'm happy to be here. I can't wait to hear your concert, which as we're sitting here is coming up in just a few minutes. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Leo and Lucia, I'm so grateful you took the time to speak with Thank me. Thank you. And I can't wait to hear you play here at Festival Mosaic. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.